So, hello everybody. I think you are now live. Uh, I welcome you to um, this uh, IEN workshop I'm going to have today uh, about uh, uh, installation of the Go Shimmer node. And we will join the Pollen test net. And uh, we will also uh, install the wallet and hopefully uh, create some colored tokens. I think we can start. Um, just uh, to show you the uh, four steps, uh, I will follow the IOTA Foundation's official installation guide. And it will be sort of a copy paste work we will do, but I will explain uh, how to do it. And um, yeah, then we will go on um, with the wallet and also the uh, graphical wallet. Uh, you will see how to install this. So let's start. Um, setting up a Go Shimmer node, please. Before you start, um, keep in mind, this uh, is uh, alpha software. Uh, it's uh, not finished yet. So um, you always keep in mind that uh, we are playing around uh, and we uh, cannot uh, think of a finished product here. So um, yeah, everything. Uh, is subject to change. Just keep this in mind. You will find box uh, if you uh, follow uh, my tutorial and will really install a Go Shimmer node. Uh, but you can learn a lot of things and you can uh, just uh, follow the progress that is made actually with the first fully decentralized uh, network without a coordinator the first uh, IOTA network without coordinator. So um, before you can install a node, you need um, a virtual private server. That's recommended. Uh, it's just because uh, the node will have to have a dedicated IP address. And running a node from your own home network is a bit more tricky because you will have to know how to uh, make your node from the, your home network accessible from outside. So I would recommend to um, get your VPS uh, virtual private server. And there are several providers out there where you can um, just subscribe for a node, for example, Hetzner or Contabu. Now, when you do, when you run a node, you will um, actually help uh, the IOTA Foundation uh, to find box and uh, your node will connect to uh, the, uh, some servers and will send logs and, and uh, they will analyze how the nodes connect and what, what is going on in the, in the network. And this actually helps a lot for uh, developing um, the new um, net. OK, now, if you have a VPS, you will get an email and you will get access uh, data for your VPS. So what I first will do is uh, I will connect to this uh, virtual private server. For this, you, you just open a terminal window. Uh, you can do this on Linux or um, uh, Windows and Mac. It's always the same. Um, then you type SSH. And normally, you have the root. And then at the IP address uh, you, you, you got in the email for your uh, virtual private server. Now you get a you get a message that uh, you you have to accept the, the fingerprint. I type yes, and now we need a password. I will 
get the password from here, I paste it, and now I have to change the password. First, once again, the, pa the, the password. Oh, you see, <laughs> that was, I waited too long. So once again, this one, get the password. Again, and that then I have the new password. Choose one. Let's make sure. Um, to keep in mind your password. Now we are logged in. You see root, and there is a, the name of your server. So. Every um, command we are now uh, run on, on the system, uh, we will do it as a root. So you have to be logged in as root. Um, normally, I recommend to create a new um, user. And uh, I will do it this maybe afterwards. Uh, maybe I show you this depends on how much time we will have at the end. So here we have the first command. We have to upgrade the packages on the system. This is normally no problem. If you copy the command, uh, just leave out the first uh, the dollar sign here. Um, I, now I can go copy and paste it, enter and we they will be running an update. This takes not so much time normally. And afterwards, uh, we will install um, some packages that are needed for Docker. And Docker is a software that makes uh, the distribution of software very easy. It uh, is like uh, containers where all the software packages and uh, the appropriate versions are packed uh, all together in one container. And this makes it very easy to uh, distribute uh, software um, and make sure that it uh, it runs. Oh, this is going to take some time here. So we have to wait a little moment. This is new one. I've never seen this. Uh, <laughs> but this should work afterwards. Actually, it's uh, taking uh, quite time. Uh, and it's the first time, it's, uh, suppose it's a head node, uh, and I tried it a lot. Uh, this is for the first time, it takes some time to get updated. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, uh, we will have to another uh, progress for for the, the docker and we will need to uh, get the 
fingerprint for the Docker and then install the Docker software. But this takes time. That's uh, intriguing. Yes. OK, <laughs> now we can go on. Uh, I just copy the next, uh, paste it. And this, again, will take some time. I will continue. Yes. And that's already finished. Then um, you will add the fingerprint for the Docker software. That's uh, just to make sure that uh, we have uh, the right software. That's uh, some security issue. And we can check if, if the fingerprint is actually, if it matches. And you see, we have the RSA 1496. Uh, and here is the ending. 0 EBF, uh, 0 EBF, that's OK. Then we will add the Docker repository. And we will install Docker now. This will take another short time. Then we will do an update for the packages. And now we are ready to install the Docker. So this should also not take too long. This uh, prepares the system for the Docker service. And here we are. Now we can just uh, check if it's running. And you see we have the container ID, image command created, status, ports, names, everything is here. So now we have another component. Uh, we will install the Docker Compose. This uh, makes it easy to uh, set up uh, Docker containers uh, because you can just have a text file with your parameters and configuration of uh, the Docker. And this is uh, quite a, a good thing. Um, the next command. Now we have to make it executable so with this command. And now we can check if it works. Uh, check the version. And here we are. It's version 1.26.0. That seems OK. So. Now, this uh, Docker Compose uh, will use the Docker Compose dot YML. Uh, and we will now um, create this. But first, we will have to create a network bridge. Uh, you don't have to um, care much about this. This is just a, a bridge that. Uh, network services within Docker uh, containers are accessible from outside and from other um, Docker containers. And now we're making a new directory where we will install, uh, where we will put this uh, Docker Compose file. We will change to this directory uh, in the terminal. You will see that we are now in the directory. And we will make a new directory within that directory where the database will be stored. And uh, we just give the correct rights 
to this directory. And now we are still in this opt go shimmer directory and with nano, this is a text editor. We create uh, this file, the docker compose.yml. Here we are. And now we have to add the following content. And you see the services, we have the go shimmer and there are uh, all the parameters, the configuration for this node. I just copy this, the whole uh, entry here, put it into uh, the Docker Compose YML. And with Control X, I will be asked if I want to save. I say yes, and that's it. I will show you. I do the list command. And you see you have in this Go Shimmer directory, you now have the database directory, and we also have the Docker Compose uh, point YML. Now, um, actually, we could go and uh, uh, put the Docker Compose up. Uh, so this would actually run the Go Shimmer node, but I won't do that now because I just want to add something more. So I will skip this part and come back later to it after uh, I have added the Grafana and the Prometheus stuff. Um, I think it's nice to have a, a nice dashboard where every uh, you have uh, an overview of many parameters uh, of your Go Shimmer node. So uh, let's do this and add these uh, two repositories to the Docker Compose YML. I go again, nano docker compose yml and now i add at the very end i have to add these entries here and when you copy paste this just make sure that you have also uh, here the leading spaces we have the prometheus configuration and the grafana configuration i copy this and just add it and then again, control X, I save it. And now we need to do a little more work for this Prometheus and Grafana. I will change. We are in the opt go shimmer directory and I will make a directory Prometheus data, we will create a new um, YML file for Prometheus. And I paste this small, these six lines here into this file. That's again a text editor, control X, I save, that's it, then I will change the rights for the folder. And we have to make some other directories for the Grafana. And the second line. Here we are, and now we have to add another uh, YAML file. And we do this also created with nano, and we put the content in it. This is for uh, how Grafana, where the data source will be for the Grafana dashboard. Actually, it will take the data from Prometheus. This is just uh, inside of uh, 
it's a configuration issue from from uh, the three Docker uh, containers that are working together in order to to um, yeah get the data and display the data of your Docker uh, of your um, Go Shimmer node. I will save it. Oh. That was okay. Then there's one other YAML file we have to create. I think it's the last one because uh, one we will have to download uh, the configuration of the dashboard actually. Um, but I think this one is the last one. We will copy paste. And yes. And here we just get the Go Shimmer monitoring dashboard configuration, uh, the official one that is provided by the IOTA Foundation. We will get it. It's already here. Uh, if I do the list command, uh, we'll see we have the local dashboard.json and we copy this one into the correct folder. Here we are. We have to set the permissions correctly for the Grafana configuration folder and now um, we are ready to run our go shim node we do this with docker dash compose space up space dash d that's the command and hopefully everything will go fine. You see uh, the software is pulled from the repositories. It will take some little time. Create it, create it. Now our, our Go Shimmer node is running and we will have a look at it first i have to change uh, in the grafana uh, login just to make sure but I'm the first one who logs in here yeah that's fine and now you go to the dashboard just you enter your IP address and we wait for syncing. You see um, IP um, double point 8081 slash dashboard. This is where you have the overview of your node and if it's running. And this will take now some time. It's up since one minute and 25 seconds. We have already three neighbors from the auto peering. Um, we can see at, now that this, it is sinking, it's basically, well, it's uh, going through all the messages and, and uh, transactions that uh, have been done. So this is quite uh, nice to see. This will not look like uh, this way when, when, when it's synced, then it will not have that much uh, 
transactions visible there. But we see um, these are actually um, two servers with public key where uh, they, they emit uh, sync beacons and we will go through all these sync beacons. I hope that uh, this will not take too long um, to get it synced because uh, we want to go on. Uh, we want to uh, check the wallet and we also want to create some colored coins. But until this is synced, I can go back to our node and we can prepare here a directory where we put uh, the wallet and uh, um, this is here. Well, before we do that, I uh, want to say that uh, Daniel uh, De Michele, he has made his script also on, on a, a GitHub. And this is a one line, a single line command. And if you use this, uh, you can, um, you don't have to go to all these copy paste thing but it will only uh, go until uh, where we've uh, stopped previously uh, before we went to the Grafana and the Prometheus thing. Uh, it will set up your um, Go Shimmer node and only the Go Shimmer um, just to this running how it will run docker compose up slash d and that's that's it and if you want to add the grafana we'll have to stop it uh your node and uh, add uh, all the commands i went through for the prometheus and the grafana but it's uh it works uh if you only want uh, um, the go shimmer node uh, you can do this. Um, just let's have a look again if it syncs or not. It's still not synced. Here, uh, then I will also show you uh, the Grafana because you have here the, the local matrix visible and also here you will see that it's still not synced you will see how many uh, messages per seconds the one were processed um, we actually have seven neighbors uh, we had 16 in total nine were dropped and so on so this is uh, quite a lot of information you can get about your go shimmer node but we're still not synced. So I will continue with the wallet. We will get the wallet. And first the command line interface wallet. You find this uh, where GoShimmer uh, is released on, on uh, the Yota Ledger uh, GitHub repository for Go Shimmer and the release page. You always have uh, the Go Shimmer files, the source code, but also these command line interface wallet. And now I'm on Linux, so I will have to get this one. Um, now I have prepared a command for this just to make sure uh, that uh, everything's working fine i will download it 
uh, save it as the command line wallet tar gz and let's see if it's here yes we have it um i will make a new um folder make a directory uh, and name it command line wallet and i copy uh, the command line wallet tar .gz into this directory um, sorry the wallet slash command line wallet part of gz so i change to the into the folder um, command line wallet and we see we have here um, this file that is uh, compressed i we will have to decompress it this is with the tar command uh, dash x f uh, we just uh, can compress decompress this now we have uh, the command line wallet here we make it executable executable command line wallet and now soon as we are synced we have to check if we are doesn't look like I'll check once more. Now oh, I got nothing here. That's uh, interesting. Because actually we should see something also in the Grafana, we still have the message that we are not synced. Okay, fortunately, I have prepared uh, another note where, uh, which is synced, so I can show you the wallet on this note. Here we are. And now check, we have to come online wallet and it should be executable already. So I will execute it from this node. It's another node. Um, I don't know uh, how much time it will take until it's synced. Normally, well, at the beginning, it was a, a matter of minutes. Uh, now it seems to take a little bit longer. So. Um, I just will uh, show you the wallet from this other node I, I have prepared. And here I start the wallet with this dot slash command line interface wallet with the name of the file. And if you use it like this, uh, you will see all um, information uh well first there's a, an error because there's no wallet dot dot file the the wallet has not been initialized yet so that's why we should do this first i will use it cli wallet slash in a uh, space in it 
And now you get your seed if you do this for the first time. And we will keep this seed. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> we will copy the seed somewhere. Maybe you want. And yep. We will check now if there are already some, if there is already a balance on the wallet. See, and uh, we have the commands, this balance, we can send funds, we can uh, check the addresses, we can request funds, and well, we will create an asset that's the uh, colored tokens. Now, first check the balance. Everything is empty, 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 empty. And hopefully this one, this node is uh, synced. So I will just request some funds for this. Take some time and do the proof of work. And then we will receive uh, the tokens. Uh, actually, we will receive 1,337 IOTA tokens for playing around with. Okay, seems to work. Uh, check again. We can go this way, the balance, and we see it's pending, so it needs to be confirmed. Before we can do anything with this, now it's already okay. So uh, confirmation time is really in about few seconds, your um, tr transactions are confirmed. Now, we have 1,337 iota in our wallet and we can now um, create an asset we could for example create a ien token so let's check how we can do this command line wallet uh, we run the wallet and we want to create an asset Oh, now we have here how, the information how we can use it. Okay, we have it to use it with the options. We have to say the amount of tokens we want to transfer uh, to the colored versions of our tokens. We will give it a name and we will give it a symbol. So once again, CLI wallet. Oh. Create asset. And the amount. I would say we can create 81 tokens with the name um, IN. IN token and the symbol IN. Hopefully this works. Let's wait. Done. Okay, now we have the color. This is the color of our tokens. Now we check the balance and we see from the 1,337 IOTAs, we have colored 81 IOTAs into IEN IOTA tokens. And here we have the color of the original IOTA tokens is IOTA and our color 
is this number and this is what makes it uh, what what, what uh, the tag of our colors uh, <laughs> sorry of our coins and uh, this will always uh, accompany our coins when we transfer them so if i do a transaction to somebody uh, from the IEN tokens, you will get uh, one token with this color. So this is uh, how we do it with the command line interface. And now um, there's also a nice wallet already available with a graphical user interface. I can just show you um, this one and maybe Let's see if it's synced. This is uh, not working here. That's a bit strange. And um, still not synced. Uh, let's wait. It's reloading. Maybe you get some other information. No, not synced. Okay, um, now um, I will get this wallet, the graphical user interface, and you find it in the Yota Ledger on GitHub, the Pollen wallet in the releases, and here you just have to select what is suitable for your um, computer. I will select Linux and I download it. And I have already uh, the wallet on this computer. So I can actually start it here and then you will see my uh, wallet. Maybe you follow me on Twitter and you see that I have done uh, the Bitcoin uh, the IOTA, and I also have uh, sent one Bitcoin to another a Bitcoin, uh, IOTA Bitcoin, <laughs> of course. And I have received uh, a one Tollen token. But um, if you do this, uh, if you send a colored token to somebody else, he basically will get the token together with the color but not yet uh, with the token name and the symbol. And uh, so that's, uh, you, you will see the, what you receive with the colors, the code, but you will have to edit and add uh, the, the name and also the symbol yourself here. Just remember um, this uh, is a alpha release of uh, the pollen network and uh, so we cannot uh, expect that everything is already uh, finished and uh, we can use it like in the main net so it's just for playing around um, you can for this uh, graphical user interface wallet you can add an IP address, so you can have it on your computer and you do not have to run um, the Go Shimmer node on your local computer. This is possible. Uh, uh, it will actually start with the local IP address, uh, but it will also say that you can change this address and then you check, uh, you, you have to have access to a synced node. And if you have, access you can put this address here double point 80 80 this is the api the web api entry for your node and uh, the wallet will then communicate with your node and uh, uh, do everything uh, you do uh, i could request some font here for example let's try maybe i will get some more maybe not Let's wait a little moment. Shouldn't take too long. We 
no, we have made it already. And the other node, I don't know. Actually, I haven't uh, tried this yet. We can uh, request several times fonts to the same wallet, but actually this should work. Let's see. Yeah, it was successful and new balance should appear shortly. It says so. Now we have confirmed 987. Let's wait a short time. And then we have pending 1,337 IOTA coins. And now they are confirmed and actually I could also create here the asset. I will do this once again, create the IEN token. And this is also possible. It's not, uh, uh, I will also create 81. But if we do this, you will see that the color code will be different. We have here the IEN token with the code BEGD and we had it uh, in our other wallet and here it's 7PXK. So now <laughs> actually on the uh, uh, pollen test net we have two times uh, IEN token, two times 81 tokens with two different colors. So there's, until now, it's not uh, checked if uh, the name already exists or, or all this, uh, just for playing around. So I hope this uh, helps you or all those who want to uh, play around with the test net, uh, the pollen test net. I hope this uh, will work. Uh, for you and that uh, you have learned something and uh, you can join um, our the net the network and make it stronger thank you for watching okay that was great daniel thanks a lot for, for taking the time <laughs> to, to walk us through all this pro process uh, let's just remove the screen Okay, so yeah, as you guys saw, this is pretty much experimental yet, so some things might not work. We have here a comment from uh, A.I. Lorraine saying that he's getting problems to get synced uh, with the server using the same IP address, and this is something we already know, Daniel, because we have discussed this. Uh, I yeah. don't know if you can extend a bit uh, on this issue. I think yeah. you submitted a, 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 a pull request to, to GitHub. I have uh, 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 just uh, opened an issue on GitHub, and uh, the this uh, bug is already known. And well, already I, I opened the issue, but it was confirmed, I think, by three others that uh, whenever you uh, lose sync from from one um, IP address uh, that you had a node that was in sync, uh, then and you uh reinstall it fully from the scratch so you you reinstall your vps and uh, you get but you get the same ip then the node will not uh sync anymore that's a problem that is known but uh, i think it will be something to be solved yeah yeah i'm sure they will they will solve solve that shortly uh kumar uh, kumar is asking if we should wait until the nodes are synced uh, before creating assets on it? Um, actually, uh, from if you have uh, your wallet, uh, you must uh, connect your wallet if you're not running it on, on a node, the command line interface wallet. But uh, the wallet must connect to a synced node. Um, and also the command line interface wallet on on, the, on your node that I showed first, uh, your node has to be synced yeah. before you can uh, 
request forms and do transactions and all that. Uh, if it's not synced, it will not work. Yeah, that's why why you you switch uh, to a yeah. synced. Yeah, so <laughs> that's uh, why I had to switch have exactly. <laughs> Okay, so um, I, 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 I'm going to take this opportunity to, to throw some questions that I, I read on Twitter or on Discord. So the first one is, uh, it's uh, regarding the difference or the similarities between the, the um, Ethereum tokens and these colored coins. Oh, I misspelled er, ERC there. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> so I don't know if you if you want to comment something on this because many people is trying to find out whether these uh, IOTA tokens, Colorado token coins, are the same uh, that, than the Ethereum ERC twenty or other tokens. Yeah, uh, there's one uh, big uh, difference. Um, if you take Ethereum. Uh, these ERC tokens, they are, uh, they can be made out of thin air. So you just ma make a smart contract, you, uh, you create your token and you say, okay, I will create 20 billion tokens. Uh, I named this, uh, I don't know how, uh, and uh, you just sell them for nothing. Uh, well, yeah, you can make money out of thin air. This was the big problem uh, three years ago, the IC, the ICO hype we had, all these yeah, ERC tokens. And with IOTA, it's different. And we have to keep in mind, and you saw this when we, when I created the token, I requested fund and I got 1,337 tokens. And then I created 81 uh, IEN tokens out of them. And uh, I still got 1,300 37 tokens in total. So uh, that's the main difference. And what you can do with this token, uh, with the color and all this stuff, this will this will come in the future. And uh, I think there will be massive uh, things, uh, use cases also with smart contracts and how you, you uh, what, what actually you, you are binding to these tokens. Uh, we will see how this will, will evolve, but it's a nice technology and uh, it will reduce uh, the native token supply for every token you have colored, but you can also switch it again back to native IOTA token. So once you have colored it and you think, well, now it's not useful anymore, you just uh, switch it back to uh, uh, normal IOTA, well, the native IOTA tokens. That's what I have understood so far. Uh, we will see. Okay. And let's do one more, uh, which is uh, mainly to explain because we have all these notes now we have uh, we have the, the the original iora reference implementation done in java now we have the hornet done in golan and go shimmer in golan as well and many people is just wondering wh why do we have all these notes and which one is going to be the, the main node uh, once all the core ci solution is implemented so probably you want to comment on this yeah well the R I or I notice uh, the old one um, the whole software is for the dinosaurs who are here and uh, or since long uh, in, with uh, iota I had also two nodes uh, and then the hornet is uh, just uh, the next step it is a community driven node that was uh, um, uh, the software was uh, written by uh, the community and uh, it's now uh, actually now the, the mainnet runs with this uh, Hornet node and it's uh, recommended to change from the IRI node to the Hornet node. And one thing that Hornet already does is it does the auto peering. So uh, with the IRI nodes, you, you had to always you had to find neighbors and uh, just uh, um, enter the IP addresses into files and keep uh, track of your neighbors, if everything okay or not. Uh, this is uh, fairly easy now with Hornet. You just have to have maybe one or two uh, stable uh, static neighbors you can have uh, and the rest is uh, out of peering and for 
the ghost shimmer that's uh well i or i and hornet still runs in the main net with the coordinator and uh go shimmer uh is uh without coordinator this is really uh the the first step uh, of a node uh of a, a network that is uh coordinatorless uh the iota vision that is uh, we are all hoping that uh, we will uh, get to this point that the mainnet will run without coordinated this core uh thing and the go shimmer is the first step um to this yeah it is amazing to see that there i mean it is still yeah. in prototype prototype phase but it's yeah. awesome to see it running already so uh, we, we got some more questions, so I'm going to try to keep it under one hour, but we have some minutes yeah, still. So Kumar is asking um, if you could share more on how the apps already running on Tangle connect with Poland and use assets once Poland is live. Is there a migration required or uh, it will support natively? um well actually these are two different things yes for now um the the pollen network is uh, really alpha stadium so uh, you, you cannot you you haven't we have no um assets or colored coins on the main net and we i don't know when this will come and uh well actually the, the it's these are modules and uh, i think the foundation iota foundation they will uh, tell us uh, how uh, they will write and tell us how to do this uh, but uh, for now uh, that's a question i cannot uh, answer how no, I, know, but I, I think that the iota foundation is gonna is gonna try to make it as easy as possible i think so yeah, yeah. yeah clearly right now uh, you can just uh, start using on the pollen testnet what you have on mainnet using the, the current stack. So uh, we have one more question now uh, from yeah, Lorraine. If we can use the e wallet on a remote VPS. Um, yeah, if you have a VPS uh, uh, with a graphical user interface, um, <laughs> uh, well, if you have a uh, like me, I'm working on, on my home computer. But if you have a VPS, normally they, they do not have this graphical user interface. Normally you, you would run the VPS with a, uh, the command line interface. But you have you can have the, the graphical user interface wallet you can have on your home computer and then connect uh, to the remote, uh, uh, to the VPS with this, uh, with the IP address then double point and 8080 and this is the api entry point the web api uh, where the, the wallet will communicate with the synced node you have, will have to have this ip address for a, uh, of a synced node then you can connect your wallet and make transfers request funds and all this but actually um uh, if you have a, a graphical user interface on your VPS, I think it's no problem to access uh, another node from from a graphical VPS. Yeah, it makes not much sense though. But yeah, you could do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think that's that's all. That's all. That's all. Um, so now we have the IEN token. We so, have two, <laughs> yeah, two so different when, colors. When, when, when do you think they will be listed on, on some major exchange? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, my Bitcoin still is not <laughs> worth $10,000, so no. Okay, Daniel, thanks a lot for, for, for showing us how to do all this. And thanks a lot to all the, the community members that, that joined in. Uh, well, we, we will be having another IEM workshop soon. So again, thanks, Daniel, for, for taking you some time uh, to show us how to create colored coins. And see you soon on the IORA Evangelist Network Discord, man. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Bye. Bye, Take care. everything. Thank you, everyone. Bye.